Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be previewing the Zorin OS 16 beta. They've made many improvements here and I'm excited to check things out. For those of you unfamiliar with Zorin OS, it's an Ubuntu based Linux distribution that tailors towards Linux beginners and makes the transition a little easier for users that come from Windows because they have a very similar layout, but you can change that around to suit your needs as well. So right away, what you'll notice is the welcome to Zorin OS 16 right in front. A new tour has been added. So we'll start the tour just to get a little bit of a feel here and to check out what essential features they need to show us. Let's start the tour. It shows us where to launch our apps from. Then we're told we can customize the appearance, which is great because it shows you a few themes here. One being the one we're using currently, which is Windows-esque like. Then on the left, we have something that represents Mac a little bit better with the dock in the middle. I guess if you're coming from Mac, that might be a good choice to go to. On the right hand side, it looks very much like Ubuntu. If you're coming in from Ubuntu and you like the GNOME desktop, that might be the best choice. And it gives us a nice little button here to launch the Zorin appearance app right off the bat. We'll save this in the background because I do want to play around with this in a little bit. We'll hit the next button and it says we can speed up our virtual machine by installing the guest editions for VirtualBox. This is great and I do enjoy Linux distributions that do this. They help you install those necessary guest editions, utilities, no need to mount and install through a CD. Great addition. We hit next to connect our online accounts. Next again, Link up your phone if you want to sync notifications, reply to texts, share files, and much more with Zorin Connect, their app. We'll continue on by hitting next. This is definitely one thing that they've boasted on their recent blog post for Zorin OS 16 beta, and that they claim they have the most expansive application catalog out of any other Linux distro. Now that seems very boastful, especially when you start comparing something like the AUR, which is available on Arch. But nonetheless, they've made it very easy to access apps from the Snap Store, FlatHub, the Ubuntu and Zorin app repositories. And if you're new and stopping by to watch this preview today, make sure to subscribe below for more Linux and operating system videos. We're moving right along. We'll launch the software as well. Might as well get a look at this in a moment. Check out the repos. Let's go shopping. All right, continuing on the tour, I'm gonna hit next again. It tells us by default we have LibreOffice. If you like using only Office more, you can install it with a simple click. It'll guide you through. And finally, that's it. If you want even more advice or tips, you can hit the visit help page and actually go through those. All right, I'm gonna close out of here and let's first check out the desktop before we get into some of the apps here. How is it different than Zorin 15? Well, we'll check things out. So this currently we're looking at is Zorin 16. And for comparison here, I have Zorin 15 as well. There's a little bit of a difference here. Of course, mainly we see a new wallpaper, but the bottom boasts more apps, is more white here. And these have been spread apart a little bit. The icons might have been refreshed a little bit, but overall it gives a more modern feel. I do enjoy that. We'll go right down into the start menu on the left hand side where we have access to various different subcategories such as accessories, games, graphics, internet, office, sound and video, system tools and utilities. And inside of each of these, we have various different apps that pertain to each subcategory. So for graphics, you get GIMP installed by default. Internet, we have Firefox web browser, Office, again, LibreOffice, sound and video, a slew of different apps available, including Cheese, Brazaro, and Rhythmbox. System tools allows you to get additional drivers, edit your power settings, your regular old settings, update stuff, and launch the Zorin appearance, which we'll check in a moment. But a nice one too to know about is Zorin Connect is in there as well if you wanna hook up that phone of yours. And if you went ahead and made it this far, please smash that like button for me. We're going to skip through utilities because it boasts some of the same as the system tools as far as apps go. But on the right hand side, we have the current user who's logged in and some easy favorites here to get you through the home users directories, of course, the software center, and then a quick access to settings. 
You'll notice from Zorin 15, this hasn't changed too, too much. Yes, it's been redesigned a little bit. As we can tell between the two, it's a little cleaner further to the left and a little bit more condensed to save space. The icons have been redone on some portions and they've gone with an even lighter theme for the start menu. Very good. Let's check out one thing that I'm interested in. If we launch a terminal and run HTOP, let's see what the processes are currently doing here. The CPU is currently running between 1 and 2%. Memory usage, I have a gig being used out of the 7.7 .7 gigs available. Now I have been running for 20 minutes or so. Swap isn't being used at all, but it did allocate 2 gigs for us as far as swap goes here in Zorin 16. Tasks are 109 and the thread count is 241 and we have quite a few processes running in the background. And then in comparison to Zorin 15, I see that we've been up for about 16 minutes and this one is running at 1.17 gigs out of the eight gigs available. The CPU percentages are varying around the same between 0.7 to 2% with some spikes of course. Tasks are 139 with 298 threads running. So they've definitely cleaned up a little bit between 16 and 15. They've also updated what seems to be GNOME Terminal a little bit. They were using an older version. If we check out the about, this is 3.36 and the other version was 3.28. And while we're inside the terminal, let's check out NeoFetch real quick. They're currently using the 5.8 kernel. That might be updated, of course, since this is the beta version. They have 1,897 native packages and then 13 flat pack packages pre-installed for us. This is running a custom theme with the Zorin blue light. And moving right along, let's check out that appearance app, which is something I'm very interested in. As you might have been noticing, they've brightened up their windows for when they launch various different applications and settings. The theme is a little brighter and they've really taken the time to condense things in a little bit and kind of give it a Mac OS-esque feel. I'm a fan of it. And under the Zorin appearance, I think the only layout they've added in is this one here, which is much like what you would find in Ubuntu with workspaces on the right hand side and on the left hand side, a dock. One of my favorites is if we choose this one in the center, we get our icons in the center, some system information over on the right hand side. And then on the left, we can manage our workspaces and applications and just launch all of our applications by hitting the grid. This one I personally like because I'm used to it on other Ubuntu based distributions, especially with GNOME set up. But of course we'll go back to the standard since we're evaluating that today and we'll show off a little bit of the theming here. We can change colors up as needed and the background. If you like dark mode, they do have a decent dark mode. I like this slate color. It really helps accentuate stuff on the interface. Most of this has remained exactly the same from before. They've just moved things around a little bit. Very easy access to changing up your fonts, changing various things that are available on your desktop, and of course, accessing interface things. One little Easter egg jelly mode here they've added in. I've heard that they have this in other Linux distributions, although I haven't tried it out myself. If you toggle that on, you get this wild animation that makes it look like jelly, or as someone has stated in my comments section, that it more looks like jello mode than anything. Anyways, that's a little fun. If you want to try that little Easter egg out, go for it but I'm going to keep the smooth animations because I like that much more. The other type can be a little bit disorienting. Another thing that they're boasting here is dynamic wallpapers. So if we right click, we do have a menu that comes up. We can select change background, which will take us to the various different backgrounds. And we can tell here by this clock symbol that it's a dynamic background. I'm going to change this to actually getting lighter and darker depending on the time of day. In Zorin appearance, I like that instead. And by default, depending on the time of day, the background changes. And currently it thinks it's about midday, even getting close to the evening time. And we can see that it's changing. If you are interested in reading more about Zorin 16 beta and getting into even more detail about their quote unquote stunning new look, make sure to check out their blog post. I'll put a link in the description below. 
but they have all sorts of updates here, including faster and smoother performance. Like I said earlier, a larger application library from various different repositories, the tour, and even better touchpad support for those of you who are using their distribution with a laptop and a few other things. At this point, make sure to smash that like button and let's check out the App Store. This looks much the same as it did in 15. Let's go to software and updates. That way we can see what repositories they have available to us. Here they have the main universe restricted and multiverse repos available to us all basically from Ubuntu or Zorin themselves. Then if we go over to other software, they have recommended updates selected for us, important security updates, and then a bunch of Zorin stable patches, apps, drivers, and even some of the PPA available to us by default. We can also see what they have available to us if we just do sudo apt update. And one thing I gotta say I like about Zorin is that they actually display asterisks for when you're typing in your password. This confuses a lot of beginners because they think they're typing away and nothing's actually typing on their screen so they don't know if they've been putting stuff in. But Zorin's done this for a while anyways. Let's see what gets synced here as far as the repos go. We have focal in release, focal update, security, and then from Zorin as well. We have focal in release, focal back ports from Ubuntu, more packages from Zorin, and then we have some from the PPA. Again, stuff that Zorin suggests for us. So it's from Zorin's PPA for apps, drivers, patches, and stable. So if we search for an app, let's say Spotify, for example, seems like we found one. And now we can see this one can come from Flathub. I don't think they offered Flathub before as a potential place to download applications from. Here's another option for us. So this one's from Snapcraft.io. You can actually select here and then get different versions. But what's interesting is that they didn't actually push these together as far as in that same location. If I were to click Spotify, I thought we could select Flathub from up here as the source. Maybe that's happening at a later date. They still have time to make changes here. I just thought that was one of the things they were boasting about. Either way, a very expansive applications library here available on Zorin. If you haven't already, smash that like button for me. We'll check out a few more things. I'm going to launch a file browser, a web browser, and let's launch a terminal in the background here as well. And now let's launch the workspaces view. If we click on the workspaces view, we get the various different applications we currently have open. So these three, and then we can search and type for an application up top. So if I wanted to search for a terminal, I can find it fairly easy, pretty responsive. On the right hand side, if I toggle over this, I can actually drag and drop applications to the terminal. This of course is to be expected with the, the GNOME desktop, but they've tweaked this just a little bit as we can see. You can also move things around the various different workspaces as well, and they dynamically come in and out of existence as you move things around. Very good, nothing crazy there. If we click on whatever we want to use, it opens up fairly quick. As far as I can tell, they have a pretty sleek looking theme here. I do like the rounded edges. It really does remind me of Mac OS, even with some of the locations of things and just how bright things are. On the right hand side, we'll just take a quick look through. And in the right corner, you, you can see the current date and time. If you open that up, it gives you a calendar. This has been redesigned just a tiny bit. Honestly, you can just see things a little better. They've condensed things. You also get notifications. Like it says here that there are additional drivers available. Zorin thinks we can fine tune our experience by downloading extra drivers. Left of that, we have the settings for wireless and wired connections, normal old settings, locking and logging out of the desktop environment. They did also make a little bit of a change to the login screen. They've made a blurred background, much like other Linux distributions have done. And that blurred background just shows the current wallpaper. I won't be checking out the gesture support today. I don't have it currently installed on my laptop, but they are boasting a new recorder app. One other nice thing, you can right click and hit star in order to star an app or a file as well as a directory. So now my starred, I can just get to documents very easily since I did star that. This is currently based on Ubuntu 20.04 long-term support. So you know you have a stable release 
at your fingertips. And I'm looking forward to testing this one out in more depth whenever official release comes out. Well, I hope you enjoyed this preview of Zoran OS 16 beta today. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you on another video. Thanks for watching.